Caterpillar hammers are precisely matched to cat excavators, backhoe loaders, and compact equipment for excellent performance and durability in a wide range of applications. A variety of sizes and tool options make cat hammers the ideal choice for all your breaking needs. The following information has been produced by Caterpillar to help customers maximize product performance and durability while minimizing overall owning and operating cost. Please review the basic hammer operating techniques and maintenance practices before operating your Caterpillar hammer. All personnel involved with the maintenance and operation of these hammers should also review the material. Never operate or conduct maintenance on the hammer unless you understand the safety information in this video and in the owner's manual. Failure to recognize and follow the safety instructions could result in personal injury or death. As with all Caterpillar equipment, always consult your Caterpillar dealer as the need for additional information arises. The information presented in the following video is divided into three sections, maintenance, operating techniques, and tool selection. Correctly maintaining your Caterpillar hammer is required to minimize downtime and maximize productivity. The result of correct maintenance of your hammer is lower owning and overall operating costs. This section will cover walk around inspection, tool greasing, bushing and tool inspection, hammer storage, and annual dealer service. At the start of each shift, prior to starting the machine, the hammer and machine require a thorough walk around inspection. Refer to the specific operation and maintenance information for the host machine requirements. Be sure all hydraulic connections are tight and secured properly. Inspect the hammer for any loose bolts, oil leaks, broken, worn, or missing parts. Fix all problems before operating the hammer. The hammer tool must be properly greased to prevent excessive wear of the tool and bushings. Proper greasing will help prevent tool breakage. Caterpillar hammer paste is recommended for greasing of the hammer tool. A thick high temperature grease with an extreme pressure additive such as moly disulfide can be substituted if the hammer paste is not available. Consult the owner's manual or your Caterpillar dealer for exact grease requirements. Always grease the hammer in the vertical position with weight on the hammer tool. This ensures the tool is forced against the thrust ring stop inside the hammer, thus preventing the possibility of internal seal damage due to over-greasing. For manual greasing of the hammer, first locate the grease access points. The grease access points can be found on the lower side of the hammer and have been marked with appropriate decals. For large series hammers, H115 and larger, remove the protective rubber plugs covering each grease nipple. Apply 10 to 15 strokes from the grease gun to each of the two grease nipples. For hammers with a single grease nipple, apply 15 to 20 strokes from the grease gun. On all large series hammers, be sure to reinstall the rubber plugs after greasing. For installations with an automatic grease system, confirm the system reservoir is full and that the system is functioning properly. Check the condition of the grease lines from the pumping unit to the hammer. For both manual and automatic grease systems, you'll know the hammer is sufficiently greased when a band of grease is visible around the tool just outside the bottom of the hammer following operation. As a general rule, manual greasing of the hammer is required every two hours of operation. However, you should always adapt greasing amounts based on the specific application demands. Every 50 service hours, or once per week, you should remove and inspect the hammer tool and lower bushing. Proper guidance of the hammer tool by the tool bushing is critical to the performance and durability of the hydraulic hammer. Therefore, inspection of both the tool and the lower bushing are a very important part of scheduled preventative maintenance for your Caterpillar hammer. To remove the tool, position the hammer on the ground in the horizontal position. Remove the split or lock pins which hold the tool retaining pins. Next, remove and inspect the tool retaining pins for any cracks or excessive wear, followed by the hammer tool. 
When removing the tool, be sure to observe the weight of the tool and use the appropriate lifting device. Always refer to the information found in the owner's manual for your particular hammer model for complete details of hammer tool removal. Inspect the hammer tool for excessive wear in the bushing bearing areas and in the retaining pin slots. Refer to the owner's manual for the published wear limits for each specific hammer. Any burrs or raised material found in the tool retaining pin slot area can be removed with a suitable hand grinder. After the tool has been removed and inspected, check the lower bushing for wear. The lower bushings on Caterpillar hammers are a slip fit design and can be serviced in the field. Most hammer models have grease grooves inside the lower bushing. These grease grooves serve as wear indicators. If the first groove beyond the lower seal is worn away, but part or all of the second groove is visible, the bushing can be reused. As the wear approaches the point at which the second groove is heavily worn yet remains visible, the bushing can be rotated and reused. If the second groove is worn completely away or the bushing has been rotated once before, the bushing must be replaced. For models without grease grooves, measure the inside diameter of the bushing in its most heavily worn area. Refer to the service information for reuse or replace criteria for the lower bushing. Note on models H90C and H100, the upper bushing and thrust ring are one component and can be inspected and or serviced in the field similar to the lower bushing. Refer to the service information for complete details. When storing the hydraulic hammer, always take the necessary precautions to prevent contamination and corrosion. At the end of each shift, the hammer should be stored in a vertical position with the down force on the tool. Whether the hammer is installed on or off the machine, it is critical the hydraulic ports are never left open and exposed to the environment. Contamination can damage the hammer as well as the machine upon startup. Whenever removing the hammer from the machine, be sure to relieve any hydraulic pressure. If the hammer is not to be used for a period of six months or longer, Special precautions must be taken to assure trouble-free operation once it is started again. All hydraulic ports should be plugged and the tool be removed in order to apply grease or rust inhibiting oil to the bushings as well as exposed surfaces of the piston. The hammer must then be secured in a vertical position using a hammer storage stand. Every 1,000 machine hours or once per year the hydraulic hammer must be reconditioned as part of preventative maintenance. It is recommended the service be conducted by your authorized Caterpillar dealer. All seals and membranes will be replaced along with any additional wear components based on inspection. To review, the following preventative maintenance is required for your Caterpillar hammer. General walk around, daily before operation. Grease hammer tool, every two machine hours or four times per eight hour shift. Bushing and tool inspection every 50 machine hours or weekly. Annual dealer service every 1,000 machine hours or annually. This preventative maintenance will ensure hours of trouble-free operation and help prevent catastrophic failure. Operating technique will undoubtedly have the single largest effect on the performance and durability of your Caterpillar hammer. Correct operation can significantly boost production and minimize machine downtime, both of which lower overall operating costs. Poor operation can result in both hammer and machine failure. The most common result of poor operation is tool breakage. The following section provides a basic guide for correct hammer operation, along with the most common problems observed in the field. The basic procedure is the same regardless of the model size and can be adapted to each particular application. Make sure that you understand the instructions and warnings in the owner's manual to ensure safe operation. For most applications, the engine RPM should be set at maximum to optimize hammer production and allow for maximum cooling of the machine hydraulic system. 
Position the machine in front of the material to be broken so that the hammer can reach the material without operating the hydraulic cylinders near the end of the stroke. Position the hammer between the tracks or tires. Operating the hammer over the side of the machine can make the machine unstable and place excessive loads on the undercarriage of track machines. Position the hammer tool as close to 90 degrees to the material as possible. Operating at an angle to the material will accelerate tool bushing wear and may result in tool failure. Only after the hammer is set up on the material should it be activated. Once the hammer tool is positioned correctly over the material to be broken, feed the tool into the material. Enough feed force should be applied so that the front end of the machine feels light. The front wheels, stabilizers, or tracks should just start to lift from the ground. However, they should not be completely raised so that there is visible daylight. It is important to maintain this feel as the hammer breaks through the material. Do not operate the hammer for more than 15 seconds in one location continuously. Excessive operation in one location is not productive due to the accumulation of dust between the tool and material to be broken. Accelerated tool wear will result, combined with high hydraulic oil temperatures. If material does not break within 15 seconds, reposition the hammer. Do not operate the hammer with an oil temperature above 80 degrees Celsius or 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Continued operation above this temperature will result in reduced seal life and the possibility of internal damage due to reduced oil viscosity. Stop the hammer as soon as the material fractures and do not allow the hammer to fall through the broken material. That could result in excessive blank firing and impact damage. Blank firing is not only damaging to the hammer tool, but also to the internal components of the hammer. These are basic operating techniques. There are also several other things you need to keep in mind when operating a Caterpillar hammer. Do not pry with a hammer tool. Prying causes high stresses on the hammer assembly and leads to tool failure. Do not operate the hammer underwater without modifications as damage to both hammer and machine will result. Underwater operation is defined as the water level anywhere above the lower bushing. Consult your Caterpillar dealer for information on modifications required for underwater hammer operation. Do not operate the hammer with machine cylinders at the end of their stroke range. Do not use the hammer to excavate, sweep, grade, or otherwise move material. For large hammers, the lowest portion of the housing, rock claw, can be used to reposition material. Do not attempt to move material with the housing above this rock claw or damage will result. Do not move material with the tool as it may break. Selecting the correct tool for the application can greatly affect the productivity of a hydraulic hammer. The type of tool required for a particular job depends upon whether the application requires primarily impact or penetrated braking. Prior to selecting a tool, it is first important to understand two types of braking. Impact braking is when hard, brittle, above-ground material is broken primarily at the surface. The material most often has been excavated through blasting. Little penetration is required as the fracture is initiated at the surface of the material, then travels through on its own. The most common type of impact breaking is reduction of oversized material in quarry applications. The profile of the blunt tool provides the most efficient transfer of energy between hammer and material and should be used for most all impact breaking applications. For applications where extremely high wear rates of the standard blunt tool are experienced, such as in very hard abrasive rock, the super blunt tool can be used as an alternative. Penetrative breaking, as the name indicates, is where penetration is required to fracture and help excavate the material. The material is often in its natural state in the ground and has not yet been excavated. The moil and chisel tools are used for penetrative applications such as trenching, benching, tunneling, and concrete. The moil tool is most universal 
and should be used in most general demolition applications involving penetrative breaking. The chisel tool can be used in benching and trenching applications or where cutting or profiling an edge is necessary. A chisel tool may create more tool retainer pin wear than the moil tool. Other tool types are available for specialized applications. Consult your Caterpillar dealer for additional information. The easiest way to extend the hammer's life is to follow proper operation and maintenance practices which have been presented earlier in the video. Again, these include proper greasing intervals, use of high quality grease such as cat hammer paste, maintain bushings and tools within specifications, 15 second maximum operation in single location, no prying or side loading, position tool 90 degrees to material, do not move material with tool, Minimize blank firing condition. Use only Caterpillar approved tools. Consult your Caterpillar dealer for additional information and recommendations. Following the information presented in this video, along with that in the owner's manual, will help minimize overall owning and operating costs. Although every attempt has been made by Caterpillar to provide a high quality product, proper operation, maintenance and tool selection is necessary for continued success when working with hammers. The factory, the dealer and the customer all share the responsibility for ensuring that success is achieved.